A few weeks ago, I was talking to another builder about some of the worst things we've ever saw in the industry. And by the time we were done with the conversation, I had realized that this just might make a good video. So here it is. About 20 years ago, I was hired to drywall an interior wall, just one interior wall, in a home that had three brick walls around it. So we had a brick wall, brick wall, brick wall, and then this wall here. And the thing that sticks out most about this particular project is the fact that they had large spans. And if my memory is correct, they had at least two six-foot sections without any wall framing studs. And I don't remember any wall framing studs underneath the window sills or above the window or door headers. And there weren't any sags at all in the framing plates. And I think the reason for that is because the building wasn't very big. I don't think it was more than 12 feet wide. However, I do believe that the building length was at least 24 feet. And by now, like me when I first came to the project, you're wondering why there wouldn't be any sagging at all in the top plates. And trust me, I put a lot of thought into this. Could it be the fascia board? Could the fascia board have actually been strong enough to provide the support in the areas where we needed them? Along with the 1 by 12 vertical siding. And this was actually siding that was 1 inch thick and 12 inches wide. And I believe this is the main reason why the top plates weren't sagging. And I think even if we would have changed the direction of the siding and ran it horizontally, we could have ended up with the same situation. And even though this isn't going to be the perfect example, you could actually take one of the siding boards and cut it into three pieces and then fasten them together so that they create a solid unit, suggesting that for each piece of siding, you might have something strong enough to hold up this particular wall. And I'm not suggesting that that's what's happening here. However, if for every single one of the pieces of siding, they end up representing a stud, then we could end up with a strong wall. And I think the wall would have been even stronger if we would have had blocks in here or maybe even a few more rows of blocks. However, once you start running rows of blocks in here, you could actually take those blocks and install them vertically as solid pieces of lumber instead of cutting them into blocks to get a few more framing studs. And since I didn't remember if the headers were larger than a 2x4, I went ahead and left them as 4x6s in the first half of the video. And from what I gathered from one of the homeowners is that the reason why they didn't install additional framing studs is because the home was built during World War II. And according to this individual in Riverside, California, where this home is located and still standing, that it was difficult to get lumber. There were lumber shortages, or at least lumber wasn't as available to private citizens as it might have been to the war effort. So this home stood for about 50 years before I added some more framing studs so that I could insulate it and drywall it. However, before that, this home went through quite a few earthquakes, suggesting that we could be overbuilding some of these houses. Well, that's probably not the case. However, I did want to share this one story with you because even though I mentioned contacting and hiring a structural engineer, I'm guessing that the people who built this house didn't like some of you. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you have a pretty good idea what you can get away with, then you're probably going to be okay. But if you don't, and this is the reason why I suggest contacting a professional engineer contractor, your local building authorities, building department, building inspectors, who should, I'm not saying they're always going to have a good idea, however, they should have a pretty good idea about basic construction assembly. So the moral to this video is simple. If you're going to use 1 by 12 vertical siding and you're not going to install any insulation or anything else that will require additional framing studs, then we might be able to get away with larger on-center stud spacing, especially when building smaller homes, tiny homes, or even sheds.